So today we're here with Dr. Albrecht Stenzinger, head of the Institute of Molecular Pathology at the University of Hospital at Heidelberg, Germany. And we're here to discuss whether the uh, immune system will win the fight against cancer. So Dr. Stenzinger, tell us about the developments around PD, PDL1 and what the impact that is around right. cancer. I think, first of all, it's really important to note that PDL1 is definitely currently the only biomarker that is in use and has shown clinical utility. I think it is a great biomarker. If you think about, you know, broad rollout, it's easy to use. You can handle that uh, with the infrastructure that's already in place, that is immunistic chemistry. So that's all good. And we also do know that PDL1 immunistic chemistry has some potential. However, as we have learned over the last couple of years or so, PDL1 is a biomarker that uh, stratifies patients um, according to their response towards checkpoint blockers, but it's suboptimal. So although there are many patients who are PDL1 positive, they do not respond and vice versa, meaning that there are patients who don't show any PDL1 expression at all and still they show some response. So that's clearly arguing for a biomarker that's better than PDL1 immunochemistry alone. And so what other approaches right now are being explored outside of the PD PDL1 framework? I think it's fair to say that, you know, from a biological or immunological standpoint, it's quite unlikely and unrealistic that a single biomarker, just like PDL1, for example, could actually reflect the complex interplay between the tumor cell and the host immune system. So a lot of approaches have been taken to actually improve the situation. And I think you could probably stratify that in two major groups. One is a genetic makeup of the tumor that renders the tumor cell actually um, towards a situation where it can be efficiently killed by the immune system. And second, it's the composition of the immune system itself. So if you think about the tumor cell, there is, for example, tumor mutational burden that will play a role with the idea that the higher the mutational burden, the higher the likelihood that you actually get new antigens there. And on the other hand, you have a very complex um, repertoire of T cells primarily um, that um, need to be interrogated to get a better understanding of the interplay of the tumor cell on the one side and the immune cell on the other side. Great. And how do you think these approaches will evolve and change the uh, pathology uh, profession overall? I think we are we are in a situation where we are starting to explore the field. It will definitely, so once clinical utility has been shown, and there are promising examples already out there, if you think about urothelial carcinoma, if you think about retrospective uh, trials like the Checkmate trials, showing that actually in non-small cell lung cancer, a combination of pd one immunist chemistry plus high mutational load is able to um, enrich a population of patients who greatly benefit from um, checkpoint blockers. You know, it's, it's, it's very likely that we are very soon facing a situation where these new quantitative tools actually will enter a pathology lab and will certainly affect routine diagnostics broadly. I don't think it's a mere replacement, but more kind of, you know, complementary tools that you may need to actually uh, grab this, this uh, tight interplay and understand this a little bit better. But of course, as I said um, at the very beginning, immunist chemistry is very straightforward. It has been implemented a while ago. It's working properly, even at smaller pathology labs with mutational load, for example, or RNA-based screening of the interference signaling pathway whatsoever or T-cell receptor 
um, repertoire interrogation, that's way more complex and you will definitely need the resources, expert knowledge, skills to really make this going. But I think the question is not, do we need this or do we need this not? It's, it's, it's already there and it will affect how we think about immuno-oncology and how we actually um, how we actually diagnose cancer. Um, it's really the question of how we get this implemented so that you can use that um, you know, in a straightforward one-stop shop way, easy to use, easy handling, uh, with reliable, comparable results across many institutions. I think that's what oncologists need. So it's high quality in short turnaround times for these new essays that are on the horizon right now. Great. Thank you for your time, Dr. Stenzinger. Thank you. Appreciate it.